I think that we can start with the tools. I think this is more crucial, I want to believe. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't plan for this, but what I'll do is I'll just share my screen and then I'll try and explain as much as I possibly can. Okay. So, okay. yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to see what the best um, what the best approach would be here. So okay. Um, hmm. So in terms of tools that you'd need, right, to implement um, at least to implement the mach machine learning model associated with this objective number two here. Primarily, what you need is, um, or would need to see if we can, we can uh, get you started with an appropriate language, right? Okay. Um, uh, so an appropriate language, because essentially, and, and, and really you don't have to spend a lot of time learning um, familiarizing yourself with uh, <clears throat> the internals of whatever language we're going to, to look at here. But just the bare minimum for you to be able to, to do things, right? Yeah. Um, now, the language that I normally advise people mm -hmm. to start out with, especially when it comes to machine learning, is uh, Python. So there's this language called Python. It's, it's, it's um, it's, it's a general purpose language. I mean, it started off as a so-called scripting language, right? Um, okay. So people traditionally have used tools like Python to just uh, to write very simple, or, well, not very simple, but to write programs that do um, micro tasks, right? So it, it was rarely the case that Python would be used to, to do complex things, but that, that has changed now. There are actually frameworks, so-called frameworks available Python frameworks that allow you to build web applications, for instance, there are machine learning frameworks, um, right? Um, so the machine learning frameworks. So, the, but, but the, the first thing here is um, Python, right? Yeah. And so it's essentially, it's, you view Python as being a tool actually, right? So uh, I'll try and see if we can come up with a plan on, on the best way of me introducing you to Python. But what you realize is it's, um, it's very simple <clears throat> and you should okay. be able to get started in, in about a week or two or something. And in fact, the, the yeah. other interesting thing about Python is, or programming languages is, uh, program, at least programming languages like Python is, you'd be able to do other things other than just uh, use the, the, the machine learning uh, libraries that are available, right? I don't know if you remember, okay. but there was uh, an interaction that we had where I was uh, showing, we were work, working through metadata uh, in the DICOM images. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So what I was using there is I was using Python to do that. Okay. Yeah. And so, by the way, before I even forget, <clears throat> yes. the Oasis, I, I actually noted that it has, uh, it brings out a lot of metadata. I, I, I discovered how to actually access get around. metadata. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It brings out the name of the machine which was used to scan and you know slice thick this into slice uh, the spaces, and it brings out everything. And right. I, I was very impressed with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so the. Besides the language itself, because this is the best tool that you'd need. So the language. For you to use a language like Python, obviously, you would um, you need a, a so-called development environment, right? Okay. Um, now all of these are, are tools here, right? so so you, you just can't like your machine the machine you have right now you just wouldn't just switch it on and be able to use Python, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd have to download the uh, uh, you'd have to download the uh, the interpreter, right? So the interpreter will allow you to do the things that I'm, I, I don't know if you can see my screen here. So I if can. I, yeah, if I wanted to, let's say, um, 
let's say I wanted to sum, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, I wanted to find the square of the, the square, the, 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 the squares of the first 10 natural numbers, right? I don't know if the natural numbers begin at one. So I'll, yes. I'll be able to use, I can use Python to write a simple thing here where I'll just say from I in, in range, um, uh, one to ten. Let's see if this will work first. Sorry, from I to ten, one to four. Bring uh, I or something. So, so I'll be able to do something like, like this, right? Where I just say print I times I or something, right? And then, yeah. So I'm printing. I'm just printing the squares of these numbers. Now, for you to be able to do this, right? I mean, the there's complex things that you'd be able to, to yeah, that you can do with Python, and you see these ones. Uh, once I start okay. introducing you to these machine, machine, machine learning libraries. But for you to be able to do this, you need a, a Python interpreter, right? Okay. Right? Um, you'd have access to this on your local machine. Um, and then you also need a, a so-called uh, integrated development environment, right? Um, so this is just a, it's a piece of software that allows you to write uh, Python, Python programs, because you, you can't, you don't write programs on the terminal, like an interactive terminal like this. You use an interactive terminal, the one I have open right now, mm -hmm. um, for you to, uh, for you to, uh, to just do very simple tasks, test things. But in an ideal case, what you need is an IDE. So okay. um, that IDE is designed in such a way that, um, <clears throat> It does things like code completion. So when you're writing programs, there are certain uh, certain common things, right? Certain programming constructs that you use often. So these IDEs yeah. will be built in such a way, or they're designed in such a way that they autocomplete those things for you. Uh, but also, okay. yeah. But also, there's things like syntax highlighting because when you're writing languages, when you're writing computer programs, sometimes you make mistakes. So these IDEs will be able to detect these very simple basic uh, errors so that you you're effective at, at, at writing programs, right? Yeah. Now, right, so, so this, is the, this is the stuff here. Now, the other thing here, right? Um, interesting thing is the world has changed now. So for you to get started, you don't necessarily have to immediately install things like this, the, the Python interpreter and the integrated development environment, they say, mm -hmm. because um, there, are, um, there are certain cloud-based services. Okay. Right? Um, now, maybe, I don't know, I'm, I'm jumping up and down here, but I'm, I'm hoping maybe I can, uh, I'm thinking here is, uh, I think it's called, Collab at google.com or something. One way, one L. Collab, one L. Oh, Google it, Google Collab. Oh, so it's collab.research.google.com. <clears throat> right? So, but uh, so, so this is this is what you'd need, and I. And we were, what I'll do is, uh, I'll just do here, I'll say, send NST download link. Okay. Uh, to do here, I'll say, send NST uh, download link as well. Okay. Okay. So, besides this talk, um, because for what you're doing, right, you, you'd be taking advantage of, um, of just a small section of Python, <clears throat> right? So you'd be yeah. using Python to just write machine learning models, to come up with a machine learning model. Yeah. Um, now, when you're implementing a machine learning model, it turns out that there, there are a number of, uh, a number of things that you, you find yourself doing, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, you, you, you create what's called uh, a pipeline. So a series of steps that you follow through. Uh, so this would start from like data collection, data preparation, 
and then uh, you implement the model, you evaluate the model, and you deploy it, right? Yeah. Um, whenever you start talking about the so-called pipeline, uh, what you're implicitly referring to is this notion of um, reproducibility, right? So you want to be able to, to easily retrace your steps, so to easily do the things that you've done before. Yeah. Right? So in the, in the recent past, um, there's the so-called Jupyter Notebooks. Okay. There's a tool, there's a technique um, that involves the use of, it's a, Jupyter Notebooks is a, is a, it's a piece of software anyway. So it's a way of, um, of doing things. Usually it's writing programs in such a way that uh, uh, you can easily share what you've done with other people. Yeah. Right. So when you a, a Jupyter notebook is like a, you remember I don't, I don't know if you still do this but Quenes remember we used to have those lab what did you call them the lab 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 logs or something we used to write things like the experiment would have books right yes yes, yes, yes yeah so they the idea behind Jupyter notebooks is the same as that only you're using software to do that oh okay yeah yeah you know those you know, printed books where we would write the the, you go to the lab, you do an experiment, you write your findings there, you do the discussion and conclusion. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So, so there's this notion of Jupyter notebooks, right? You can. Um, uh, I don't have to show you these things right away, but uh, I can. I can probably. I can probably showcase something just now, just so you're able to understand, I guess, what uh, it means. Uh, it's here. Probably not. Let's see. Scripts. So with a Jupyter notebook, right? Uh, I would, uh, oh, and uh, I think I reformatted uh, my machine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's, uh, I'll have to insert. But with Jupyter notebook, right? Uh, with a Jupyter notebook, so what I'll do here again is to do, I don't know how much is going to be too much for you, but send NS download link. The, the idea is I would want you to just uh, set up this, these things. And, uh, and I'll yeah. get to that soon, actually, because it turns out that even if you don't set them up, there's a way of, if you have a, a stable internet connection, there's a way of doing these things. Okay. Um, yeah, online. Yeah. Um, and I guess I'll get to that. So this Google Collab thing that I just uh, opened, it's called a collaboratory, right? Yeah. And what this allows you to do is you can, you can do all of these things that I've just spoken about using Google Colab, right? So you can run Python programs. You can use it as an integrated development environment, although it won't be able to, to showcase like errors in your syntax or something. Um, okay. And then Google Colab is actually a cloud-based uh, version of Jupyter Notebooks, right? Uh -huh. So the way it works, right, is uh, you create a new notebook. I don't know if you can see here. So if I say file new notebook here, when I mm -hmm. create this new notebook, I can then start, uh, depending on, on what sort of problem I'm working on, I can then start writing code. So imagine a situation where, let's say, you want to build a very simple model, right? That, um, yeah. uh, that is just going to detect, uh, um, I don't know, uh, the, mam the, the mammarian thing. What, what did you say that was again? Mammography. Mammography, right. Let's say you yeah. want to build a model that's able to detect like uh, images linked to mammography or something. Yeah. What you do is, as a first starting point is you open a new notebook, you rename it or something. So mm -hmm. say mammography or something, I don't know if this is the correct spelling here. Uh, yeah, just give it in, uh, yeah. two M's, right? That's Double right. M, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you do that and then, and then you start writing code. Now, the way this works, don't feel threatened, but there's a couple of, there's a number of embedded concepts within this but uh, you'll be fine. So the way this works is uh, when you imagine what you do when you're writing, when you, you have the lab notebook, you write things 
maybe formulas and yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know equations or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when you're writing code, sometimes you want to annotate the code, right? Yeah. Um, the way you do that is you use it. You 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 do that using um, a markup language, okay. right? So so you need to. I'll just say I will write down the map. There's a markup language called Markdown, okay. right? Now Markdown, by the way, what I'm writing, the things I'm writing here, like one, two, I'm using syntax here Markdown because I've gotten used to Markdown so much. And, and it's so powerful that you can actually use it to, like what I'm writing down right now, I can easily convert this to PDF, to Word, by just using these styles here. But okay. yeah, so it's a very simple, um, it's a very simple language. I can show you how to do that. I will show you how to do that in, in time. But just to showcase an example, let's say I wanted to create to just uh, create a heading here that this is uh, this is to a model, uh, mammography model. What I'll do is I'll just specify that this is a mammo, mammography model like so. And then and then when I when I execute that code, right, the text is properly formatted. If you notice, it's somewhat larger here. Yes, right? yes. Uh, yes. Let's say you wanted to also include things like uh, the author details here, right? You could just say, um, maybe you could say, uh, I don't know if there's a way of, uh, this is a thing with uh, go call up here, but what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to include, uh, hmm, it appears there's no easy way of, uh, but but you could also include uh, like fancy things like uh, if you wanted to say you want to include the authors, right? Yeah. Uh, so you could say author Ernest Zulu or something. Maybe this would be level two heading or something, right? Yeah. So the sort of things you would do, right? Um, but I can delete this, I guess, right? Now, uh, with this, uh, if you remember, I was, I was saying that... Uh, you could skip the download and installation of all these things because you do your, your call up, your Google call up. By the way, um, anyway, I'll send, I'll send link to Google call up again here, I guess. Uh, do send in its uh, link to Google call up. It's Google collaborator or something. So with this, I can write pro Python program. So if I wanted to print, uh, uh, and it's Zulu, for instance, I'll do that, right? And hopefully yeah. this will be able to work, I think. Should be able to run without a problem. So it's taking time here because when uh, it's in the cloud, so, so there we go. Uh, okay. If I wanted to, let's say, create a simple program that allows me to enter, let's say, um, for lack of a better example here let's say you want you enter your a, your date of birth and then it computes your age right i yeah. could just do this right i could say uh um uh i could say uh you are and then i'll just say uh input uh enter your date of birth, right? Like so. And then I can just wrap this in uh, an integer like so. And then I'll just say, uh, I'll just say subtract 21 to your date of birth. So observe, if I just enter this, the, there's a prompt that says enter your date of birth. And if, if I'm Zambia, I'll say I was born in 1965, for instance, and then this program will just write you are 56. 56. Guess, yeah, I guess you wow. could have easily say that okay. you're 56 years old or something. So what I'm trying to showcase is, is that uh, the, um, the stuff that you would do, right? So 1964 here, the stuff that you would do using, using your lo locally installed environment, development environment, like an IDE and the Python interpreter, which I have, <coughs> I have, <coughs> I have installed on my machine. So what I was showcasing there, I could do using, uh, I could do using, uh, using my locally installed uh, Python. Python, and I'll be able to do the same thing, right? So I'll just say print, so essentially just write on the same piece of code. So you are, uh, and then I'll say, uh, 
years old or something, right? <clears throat> and then here I would say, uh, say uh, 2021 minus uh, int, that's our input. Uh, please enter your date of birth or something. Right, so that when you enter a date of birth 1964, you, you get the same sort of result here. Mm. Right, so what I like about um, what I like about Google Colab is, as long as you have an internet connection, you don't yeah. have to worry about installing things, right? Python, yeah, yeah. And this, uh, what you soon discover is it's not just Python you're installing; you would have to install Jupyter notebooks. Jupyter notebooks, yes, yes, yes. So, so the, one of the reasons why I was unable to showcase Jupyter notebooks here. When I was looking at the script, is because I haven't installed it yet, so I'd have to install it. Okay. Um, I'd have to install it, but but um, it uh, proposes have to install it. But 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 the the, the thing is, uh, uh, my, with my local installed Jupyter notebook, I'll be able to see. Uh, so I converted a notebook into this PDF document here. There's a course that I teach, and so I normally share code in PDF and as a Jupyter notebook or, so, or something. So. Okay. So that's 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 the thing about um, about Google Colab, right? The fact that you do things in the cloud. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then besides this, right? Would would then start would then have to to look at uh, machine learning libraries, right? But mm -hmm. I, but I think I think for now maybe what 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 I think would be nice, right? Is uh, if you can once I send the links, if you can. Maybe install a local version of Python. By the way, yeah. if in fact we can do it right now. Um, actually, I think I think you already have Python installed by default. Okay. You are using your Ubuntu machine, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's an interpreted language. There's a number of programs that are implemented in uh, in Python. So if you <clears throat> if you if you open a terminal. You, you know how you search and then you say terminal. You remember that, right? Yeah. I, from, uh... <clears throat> Maybe I can have you share your screen. I'll stop sharing and then you can share the screen and then I can guide you. To showcase okay, that yeah. you already have this installed. Yeah. Able to see my screen now. Uh, let me just uh, confirm here. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. So if you just search for terminal. <clears throat> yeah, so you can open that. And then just type in Python 3, one way. Yeah. So there you go. So already you can maybe write uh, print and then you can print anything. You'll be able to write, okay. you'll be able to print that, yeah. So technically speaking, you already have uh, a locally installed version of Python. Usually it becomes, oh, print and then in parentheses. Uh -huh. So open parentheses. I, I should leave that space. It doesn't matter actually. Okay. Uh, and we'll discuss the syntax very soon. But and then in double in, in quotes quotation open quotation closing mm -hmm. double quotation mark just type in any any anything you want. Uh, okay. Um, Maybe my name is Enes or something. I don't know. That's okay. Nice. And then then I you close. close. Yeah, with a quotation mark, and then you close the parenthesis as well. Okay. And then you say enter. And then it will print that. The other interesting thing about like the, the inter interactive um, console that you're using right now is you, it, it, it's able to detect like um, um, uh, math, uh, uh, so m mathematical expressions, right? So if you say write anything, let's say four plus five or something, just without any print, just say four plus five, it will be able to give you the answer, right? Um, 
So you, you can say 4 plus 5 or 4 uh, times 5. Uh, just press enter once you write the expression. It'll give yeah. you an answer. Okay. And then also, yeah. also, I mean, you have access to very uh, powerful libraries, math libraries. So you can, you can, um, you can, uh, uh, you can also uh, get the powers of, so if you just say POW, And then parenthesis, let's say you wanted to compute two to the power, I don't know, two to the power eight or something, or two to the power five, which okay. is the two, I guess. So you write two comma five. So it's like two raised to the power five. And then you okay. close and press enter. Um, it will be, yeah, give you that great. answer. You know, so, so there's, a, there's a very powerful, there are some libraries that you have to explicitly download, like machine learning libraries. Yeah. So um, I'll walk you through exactly how you do that. Uh, so how you install the modules, right? But yeah. Maybe for now, just uh, making sure that you install these tools locally and you know how to access them. How to access um, them. Yeah. Using Google Colab would be the most important thing here. Um, yeah, so so you already have Python installed, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, the only thing you would probably need access to is um, a very nice uh, integrated development environment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, now there are a number of IDEs out. I, I yeah, I, um, I've used Wing. So I, I taught a lot of Python when I was a graduate student. I used to teach first year Python. Um, okay. And we used to use Wing. Maybe we can have you uh, install that. Okay. I, I don't know if there's a... Uh, there's uh, an easier way of installing Wing IDE on uh, on Ubuntu, but I think you'd have to download it or something. So what you can do is open your web browser, a new tab. Okay. Yeah. And then just go to... Um, just I guess we can just go to the... Um, I don't know if there's a uh, wing. I'll just uh, just give me a second. I'm trying to see if there's an easier way of okay, is, of installing wing here. Let me just test it on my local machine first to see if this is going to work. Okay. Then we can... Uh, we'll go. So an ID, again, an ID is just a, a piece of software um, that allows you to write programs effectively and efficiently. I've just shared a link there. So if you click on Wing, um, on that link, Yeah. Yeah. You can then go to. Hmm. You can then go to under downloads. You see at the top after about. Yes. Yeah. So what we can do is we can have you uh, uh, just install. Just go to personal. So you. Under downloads, if you hover, mm -hmm. yeah, so just get personal. And then you can just, uh, I think you have 64 bits, so just click on Ubuntu Debian package 64 bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just wait for it. There's about 64 megabytes that need to be downloaded. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so as it's downloading, so the IDE would allow you to to instead of writing the because when you're writing a computer program right you don't write yeah. one line as like four plus five or print hello uh, print my name is ns zulu or something you you a typical program is is usually it's usually composed of multiple lines of code right 
could be anywhere between yeah. maybe 100 to even a thousand lines of code right but for what you're doing like the machine learning um the, the machine learning models that you're going to implement here these are usually it's just a few lines of code because most of the stuff the heavy lifting is done for you by the library well not a few lines of code but and usually not more than a thousand code. anyway yeah so so your your we your ide allows you to effectively write the programs that's that's the point of an ID. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe as you're doing as you're doing that, we can also have you just install uh, Jupyter notebooks or something. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah. And then it's for the others, it turns out that uh, yeah, so you can just say should Jupyter notebooks. Or if you just go to Jupyter, uh, scroll down. Let's see if you can get to um, scroll down. It's a Jupyter notebook. Aha. Uh -huh. So where you have uh, that Jupyter. This one. I don't know if you have. But do, just click on maybe install. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Uh, usually, I mean, I, I was going to suggest that you, you install the Jupyter Notebook, but we can install, we can have you install the uh, uh, Jupyter Lab or something. It's like, it, it has um, slightly more features. So that might be a bit of a plus. And that's what it says here, getting started with Jupyter Lab. Uh, yes. So you, you scroll down and then um, you want to, okay, this is the part where, cop, copy the part there that says, um, just slightly up, is it below? There was Jupyter Lab somewhere. Yes, uh, so you get getting started what? with Jupyter Lab. And yeah, so I, I just scroll where it installation. says installation with, installation with PIP. Just scroll down. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah. So just just copy that. The pip install Jupyter Lab. So again, that um, pip is just um, it's a feature within Python that allows you to install libraries, Python libraries, right? So you just look up information to an existing repository and then open the terminal. You want to click that keep. The file has finished downloading, so click on keep. I can't see what's it, but keep, yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe we can install JupyterLab and then get back to the Python. So you can type in. Uh, so I, I paste it there. In the yes. Yeah, open the terminal. Yes. No, open the terminal, the black window. So just t t search for terminal. like we did before, open that. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, we need to get out of that. Just type in exit. Uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. So exit and then open parenthesis, close. Yeah. Open, close parenthesis. Yeah. <clears throat> and then enter. That's how you exit the terminal. And then okay. just paste what you copied. Before you press enter, though, you want to. Um... So the way this works is this should use because Python 3 is the most recent version. So in front of peep, put a yeah. 3. Okay. You can't click. You have to move with your arrow key. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. In front, because it is here. At the end of PIP, so PIP 3. 3. 
yeah, present it will complain because you, you don't have easy install. So now just copy that, the sudo apt install, just copy that entire command and then just paste it on the terminal again. Yeah, just click on the, I think it's on the, it's somewhere below there where you have uh, icons, yeah. <clears throat> sudo, right? Yeah, sudo all the way up to the end, and then copy. And paste it here. Yes. And then enter. It will ask for a password, just type in your password. Right, so it might take a while. Just say okay. yes there. Uh, press uppercase Y and then enter. Uppercase Y. Yeah, and then enter. So it's um, it might take a while be because it's okay. so it's going to to um, to download easy install or something. Right. So, unfortunately, the way this works is that um, this is interesting. Oh yeah. I mean, I've, I've always liked uh, program. At least. So the thing with me, I don't know about you, is I always okay. find things that okay. I have control of uh, interesting. So when you're when you're writing a program, you're you're telling yeah. <laughs> the computer what it should do on your behalf. So it's it's like you're creating something new, which is always fun, I suppose. Uh, and, yeah. and also, unlike these other things where you, there's little thinking, there's, there's quite a bit of thinking that goes into writing a program, right? Because you have to sit down and plan and you're thinking about the sequence of instructions that you're going to write, you know? So um, there's a bit of a challenge there. Yeah. It's, it's unlike at, no, I work in a shop, I sell things, you know, there's no thinking there. It's just somebody comes, <laughs> what do you want? They'll point, you get it, you get the money, you give oh, them change. Yeah. Then, uh, not that I'm shooting down people that sell things, but I'm just nothing can change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <it's> going to... <clears throat> So some of these things that we're about to start actually we, we, we will need to um we need to re strategize. It might be more effective if we if we actually meet in person. I mean this works also where you're guiding somebody. Yeah. But but maybe uh, being co-located, being physically present might be helpful. Something I don't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost done. Once it's done doing that, um, should be able to. to run Google Colab. So as it's doing this, right? What, because yeah. it, it, it's, 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 it's just a little bit of stuff that needs to be done. What you can do, right, is you can, you can actually go to um, the cloud-based version of the environment that we're setting up. If you remember, I mentioned that uh, the so-called Google Collaboratory, right? So I've just pasted it there. Mm -hmm. If you just click the link, you can actually bookmark it so that you don't forget it. That link, it's long, it's, so you, you just have to be logged on to any Google account and everything you do is automatically saved to your, to your, so you want to click the meet, one of the meet things. I've pasted it in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you click on, uh, in the, if you are logged on using Google, all of the notebooks that you create from there, right, will, um, will be saved in your, in your drive automatically. Which, yeah. which I quite like because you don't have to worry about oh the data needs to be saved or something. So there yeah. you go. Uh, so you have access to that. You can immediately just click on new notebook somewhere there at um, the bottom b b before oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you can name it maybe my first notebook or something. And you'd be able to write like similar things that you were typing on the interpreter. Great. Only these things would be saved in your notebook. And you can share this notebook with other people. So that would be a print. You'll have to write a print or some print and then um, visual stuff. 
uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, oh, yeah. and then in quotation marks you write uh, your name or something. Don't uh -huh. worry, the syntax. Once once you you yeah, so double quotes and then yeah. Okay. So you notice that even the syntax here is working, right? You see the yeah, red yeah, thing. Yeah, I've seen the red yeah. thing. You know, yeah. Yeah. And then I close. Yeah, and then you close the parenthesis as well. Okay. And then the way you run this is you can click the play button or you can just press uh, shift enter, but that play button to to the left there. Yeah. You can just yeah, click on one, that. This one. Yeah. So when you click on that, you're executing whatever instructions are in that cell. So that's Great. for the cell. Great. Again, I'll walk you through how a notebook works like. We can, we can come up with a proper schedule of like what we're going to be discussing. Maybe we'll start with the notebook and then we can, we can do that. But usually this would be, would take a t there time because are. it needs to, yeah, so there you go. It needs to initialize the, um, the runtime environment. So yeah. I don't know, we can go back to the terminal to see if uh, that installation is done. Okay. Uh, At the bottom somewhere, I think you, uh, way below you have the terminal. Oh, you want to bookmark that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we'll go back to the terminal. Oh, yes. this one. Yeah. So it's done there. So now you can press up the up arrow key so that you get back to the you remember that command that failed? Just press the up arrow key, the up yeah. arrow key. Okay. I, again? Yes, this is what we wanted. So, but before you run this, at the yeah. beginning of that command, just use the left arrow key. It, oh, it won't okay, work yeah. with clicking, okay, so you yeah, have to yeah. use the left. Yeah. Just type in sudo space, and then press the space button, sudo space. Uh -huh. And then press enter. So. So what you're doing now is you are, because pip has been installed, yeah. you, are now, you are now going to install JupyterLab. Okay. So JupyterLab is a local version of Google Colab. So you'd, 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 you'd find it useful if you are in a situation where you're not connected to the internet. Because if you're not connected to, to the internet, internet, you can't use yeah. Google Colab, right? So then you'd use your local yeah. version yeah. of... Um, but I mean, these days it's almost always the case that you're connected to the internet anyway. But just in case, you yeah, have connection, mm -hmm. or if your connection is slow. Yeah. Um, so the way people works is it, it goes to some some repository on the internet and then picks the packages that you're installing and the dependencies, which is why it's saying okay. downloading, collecting, and then it's eventually yeah. going to install everything. Great. Again, maybe at the beginning, uh, all of this might be, for lack of a better phrase, slightly confusing because there are a number of um, connected concepts that um, are going to come your way. But eventually, yeah, yeah. Um, you will figure things out. And there's nothing complicated about this, actually. Yeah. I, I, I know my, my brother in the village would think this is witchcraft. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's not just your brother. I, I, I'm sure if I sat down and started showing my father and my mother what I... Some of the, sometimes I avoid <laughs> giving them details of what do you do at work. I just tell them I teach. Yeah. But, because if you start to sit down and say, I, I teach people how to write computer programs and this is how you write a computer program, nah, this, they won't understand that. Right? <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing yeah. is I remember one of my PhD um, advisors, right? Uh, it was also my, my master supervisor was telling me, you only know that you understand something if you're able to explain, right? If you're yeah. able to explain it to somebody who, who has no knowledge about what you're doing, like your grandmother. I used to give an example of your grandmother. So <laughs> then you would know that you understand what you did for your master's or your PhD if you're able to simplify to your grandmother what exactly it is you did. To understand. Yeah, so, yeah, so that yeah. she understands, right? Uh, that's a challenge mm -hmm. right there, but um, <laughs> your connection is good these days. Huh? What happened? I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> okay. so yeah, it's uh, just the same way. Uh, I don't know. 
in the same place. I don't sit in the same place, so I don't know yeah. what has changed. Maybe after I made that complaint to them, yeah, uh, it was a time when I was completely down, and I I, I raised complaint with them, and uh, mm -hmm. they said they were going to forward my complaint to I uh, don't you know the some appropriate departments or so. And after, when it came back, I think I noticed that uh, problems uh, reduced. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So that thing is done. So the way that yeah. you check is you just type Jupyter Space Lab. Dash Lab. Sorry, not space, but dash. The hyphen. Hyphen. Yeah. Then I enter. Yes, and then press enter. So automatically it opens up um, your browser. J just okay. wait for it. There you go. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it then opens up uh, that local host full colon uh, 8888 slash lab yeah, is just slash showing lab. you that it's running on your local machine. And then okay. you do the same thing, right? So you just, uh, you'd, you'd create a completely new notebook, right? Um, yeah. So I, I don't know if you can, you can either use the plus sign or that thing that says uh, file. You can say file or you can click. So you see what, where it says notebook? Yes, yes. On the main thing here. You can use the Python 3 I, I, IPy kernel. So yeah. just click the, yes, click there, the big button. So what you have, I don't know if you notice, that's a bit familiar now, right? Yes. You still yes. have the cell. So in that yeah, cell is exactly. where you write the, the instructions, the code. Yeah. Because this is a Python kernel, it recognizes Python commands or instructions. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, what what I can um, what I can do is uh, if you want, we can have another ad hoc session. Um, whenever you want to, maybe just twenty minutes or something during the week. Yeah. Um, and then I can. I can explain maybe a few comments, but also maybe what I can do is actually instead of that, I can just say uh, there's a very nice short book, it's less than a hundred pages. Okay. It, it might uh, help get you started in terms of like simple commands. Yes. Uh, by the way, Python is an extremely powerful language, right? Okay. There's so much you can do with this. Um, in my case, actually, it's my number one uh, uh, programming language when I'm scripting. Well, Bash maybe is the first one, but when I'm writing something complex, I prefer to use Python. Okay. Um, uh, Python. There's a, there's a, there's a very nice book called... Uh, uh, it's only 100 pages. I don't know why I keep uh, forget a byte of Python is called. So um, I can just send you a direct link that would be a lot easier. It's um, it, there's a PDF version. There's um, there's also an HTML version, so you can download the PDF version, and you should be able to follow through with it. So I've just pasted something in the uh, in the chat, chat window. Um, <clears throat> Should be able to help you get started. So usually a nice way of getting started is just to write simple one-liners where you just print things, you you construct a simple mathematic expression, you write a small function that is able to maybe compute the grade, whether it's an A plus or a B plus or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you notice to your left there is a, is a, a, what do you call this, the table of contents or something. Table of contents, yes. Yeah, so first steps, basics, it's, I like this book. It's, it's, um, it's a nice introduction. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of the tools, for now, I, th I think these are the best tools that you just need to... Uh, maybe as a last thing, in terms of tools, we can install Wing. Because, you remember I mentioned an IDE? Yes. Um, so if you don't want already, to use... The one yes. You already downloaded. So you can just click on that. And then you'll be able to install it, I guess. Integrated uh, development environment. Yes.
Uh, did, did you did, did you click on that? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, just go back to your downloads folder, maybe. And then, oh, there, there it is. What, what is that thing that just came up? Just click the, next to the terminal. There's something. Yeah. Just click on that. And then let's wait for it. I'm wondering why it's taking a while to stop. There we go. So you can just press, press install. Okay. Yeah, it might take, I don't, I, it shouldn't take long. It should yeah, it's already active. Yeah. So what you will notice is you, whilst you can write programs in a, in Jupyter Lab or Google Colab, but with a with with an ID like this, you, you're able to write more complex programs, like multi-line programs. Now you can do that in Google Colab or, or Jupyter Jupyter Lab or something. But um, an IDE, which is specifically meant for that purpose, is usually ideal. Some instances. Yeah. So when you're learning how to, so when you're, uh, when you're learning how to program, so using Jupyter Lab will become useful when you actually start writing or implementing the machine learning models. Yeah. Uh, but, but when you're practicing using Python, you're better off using the IDE. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we can just go to, we can close that top right there because it's installed. And then I, you should be able to search for it or something the way you normally search for other programs. Uh, so maybe minimize the browser and everything else and then you can search for Win. I think you close the browser in it. To wait for you to open it. All right, welcome back, one. Yeah, sorry, I think I pressed, I, I closed. Uh, instead of minimizing. Instead of minimizing, yeah. Yeah, maybe you want to share your screen? Okay. Yeah, so you said we were about to try and uh, search for. Yeah, so you, you minimize that so that you, you know how you search for program. When you're searching for the terminal now, you search for win. Or, yeah, or you can click the start menu and then you can, you should also minimize that terminal as well. Okay. The minus sign, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so you can just type win in there. There you go. Okay. So just click on wing person where you have that feather. Yes. That would wing person or eight. No, the oh. one. Yeah, the huge. Yeah. Okay. Accept. And then just like accept, yeah. All right, so the the way this works, you can close that. It's the X, that's just a two tip. Yeah. So the way this works is uh, you create um, a file where you're going to write programs. So the same file and then new. So top left where you have file. Yeah. You can use the tool, but yeah, say file mm -hmm. and then you say new. And then each file is has, has a dot .py. Uh, okay. extension so there you can write stuff so you can write the same command you had print and then the the text you want printed 
so this is what I was saying, autocomplete. You see that? You didn't have, uh, did you notice that? When you no, just, no. okay, delete everything and then start okay. slowly, PR, PR. You see what's coming up? Yeah, okay. Autocomplete. You don't Auto, have that yeah, in yeah. in Google Colab or in Jupyter Lab. Uh, yeah. So, 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 so like when it comes like that, autocomplete, how, how can I... Uh, just go well, straight you, for it to complete without me. So you can, you can move your mouse and, and click on it or you can press enter it. or press enter. Yeah. Okay. And then it will do that for you. Okay. Very useful, especially especially when you're writing a lot of things, right? Because yeah. then you don't have to. You don't have to. But I mean, if you're faster and... typing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can then open parentheses and then the string or whatever you want to type and then you press uh, the play button. Uh, you either use the play button or enter. The play button, actually. So you have to, in your toolbar, I don't know if you can see, towards the end, to your right, there's that play button. Oh, yes. Okay. So you use this your, one. No, 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 no. Top, and then there's that green play button. Ah, uh, this one. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one you use. Then the output would, uh, oh. Just say okay there. It wants you to save the file. Just save file. Just say save. Okay. Okay. And, and then, then just you save select. It. Yeah. Your name and you select the usual stuff. Okay. Play click the play button again. Okay, just uh under environment there, you're supposed to select the development environment. Just press uh, down. Yeah, let's see what I think we're supposed to. Okay, just place okay. Let's see what happens. Actually, untick that thing that says show this dialogue every oh, time. Oh, yeah. okay. But that's okay. fine also. So okay. you can untick that thing that says show this show dialogue this. before run and then say okay. So you see where you'll be seeing your output now? You can see where the, my name is Ernest there, right? Yes, here. Yeah. I've seen it. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. So I okay. think, yeah, so I think for now this is, I encourage you when you refer to that card, a bite no of book. Or, yeah, yeah the bite, it's um the when you're doing this for the first time, it's usually very exciting. So you won't get bored. Uh, yeah. You know when you learn when you learn how to program, right? In fact, I always when I have the chance, I always uh, I, I always make time and teach people in other disciplines how to program because it turns out that programming. Um, in some instances, it's discipline specific, right? So the things that you do in yeah. your in your chosen area or in your area of expertise is different from what I do, right? Because exactly. you understand yeah. you understand yeah. your area where you're able to make or effective use of this thing. But programming yeah. is all about automation, right? So yeah. the things that you do often, when you learn how to program, you can automate those tasks. Yeah. So think of of like uh, if you have a number of slices of images, you can write a simple script that just filters maybe things that are different, right? Mm -hmm. um, images that are different. So instead of a thousand images, you maybe restrict yourself to maybe 10 or 20 images or something. Yeah. You know, so anyway. Yeah, so my thinking is maybe for now, this should be enough. Uh, yeah, we sure. can we can look at the timeline maybe per Friday. Or yes. Yes, yeah. yes. Someone was just reminding me that Monday, 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 Prayer day. I didn't know. I thought uh, uh, I was thinking the Conchito, but it's a holiday. So the 18, other week, eh? yeah, the other the coming weekend is going to be a long weekend. Unless if Bali, 
decides to say no more <laughs> prayer day. Mm. People do kill him, right? <laughs> oh yeah, eighteenth. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, it will be on a Monday. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anyways, uh, I was. I don't know what I was cooking today. I mean, besides the rice, I just dumped. Uh, stuff in the oven so let me just see if i can eat something unless if okay. you have any any thoughts or questions about this before we part ways i don't know uh no uh, thanks very much for <clears throat> the the ride through I, yeah I, I, I was i was taking short notes and i'll actually just go to the bite of the python and um, yeah and you start scrolling through and seeing what's there if you need uh to find out something quickly instead of wasting time reading, if you think reading online or looking up stuff online is going to be um, a waste of time, just pick up the phone and then let me know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, when you're getting started, you're bound to, I mean, there are certain things that may be a bit confusing and whatnot, but eventually you catch up, you know. Yeah. Uh, and usually people with high IQs, it's like I've, I've bombarded you with a lot of things because I know you can handle them. Uh, in past interactions I've had, you first of all maybe spend an entire lecture teaching m m how to install Python, right? Yeah. You know, but uh, but anyways, okay. I, I was taking notes about the things to say. I don't think I should send the interpreter because we've installed IDE, we've installed Jupyter yes. Notebook, we've installed, installed as well yeah. Google Colab. So there's nothing to send. Yeah. Um, the next time we are meeting, maybe we can do a little bit of markdown and then. Uh, we can also talk about how you install packages. Okay.